Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I will be on camera momentarily um, as soon as our uh, computer catches up to us a little bit here. Uh, this is another edition of Grass. Okay, everything green bars across the fruited. How's that? Is that better? Oh, wait. Hang on. Let me switch out the batteries in this. Uh, I hit the button on my, my mic thing with my keys in my pocket. Chris, how's that? You got me? I got you. Okay. Let's just pretend the last couple of minutes never happened. It'll be, uh, it, it'll be like that time at your bar mitzvah when your uncle was going to give you a $5 bill, but he wanted you to sit on his feet for a couple minutes. And you just have to kind of put it out of your mind and pretend that it never happened. But uh, let's, let's, let's reset. Let's start over. And let's remember to not have our keys and our bike pack in our pocket at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is another edition of Grassroots Motorsports Live. I'm JG Pasterjack. This behind me, let me bring up our, our Facebook friends here. Hi, Facebook friends. <laughs> All right. Uh, hi, everybody. So Steve's here. Carl's here. A lot of our regular, um, regular uh, folks are here tonight. I got YouTube over here, so if anybody wants to say hi, if anybody has a question at any time during our deep dive review of the 2019 Hyundai Elantra Sport tonight, throw it in the chat, throw it up on YouTube. We're just kind of hanging out, checking out a cool new car tonight. So you're asking me, why is there a Hyundai in the shop and not you know, a Pantera or something awesome like that, or a C8 Corvette? Well, first off, they aren't giving journalists C8 Corvettes yet, and um, I'm not cool enough for a Pantera. But I think, I think you're going to be fairly, fairly impressed when we start going through this thing. Before we get going, though, let's, uh, let's do the usual thing we do at the top of every show. I want to ask you to uh, please like, please share. If you're watching us over on YouTube, please subscribe. All those things matter very, very muchly to us. Very, that, that is a very, very big deal to us to have that social media currency flowing into the show. It helps the show climb the ladder. Of, uh, of, of eyeballs, and it just sort of helps us go back to our fantastic supporters like CRC Industries, for example, like Coney Shocks, like SPC Industries, um, and tell them that we are doing the Lord's work for them and we are spreading the word. CRC, you can check out any major retailer near you. Uh, our giant shelf back there is actually getting getting kind of low, kind of thumbprinty because we love all their stuff. We love even more that they give a little bit back to the motorsports community. Of course, Coney Shocks, Coney-NA.com on the web or great retailers like Tire Rack, Shocks, or whatever you are driving from your tow vehicle to your track car. And SPC, Specialty Products Corporation, SPCAlignment.com on the web for control arms, camber kits, roll center correctors, whatever you need to make your car Go fast around corners. SPC has it. SPCalignment.com on the web. There we go. All right, let's uh, let's let's do this thing. Let's let's hang out tonight. Uh, so Andrew says, uh, yeah, they, they haven't um, they haven't given us a C8 because we are uh, we are too good for the C8. Thank you very much, by the way. We were at the C8 launch last week and managed to go live for a while. 
We had a nice crowd uh, sort of sharing the experience with us. So thanks to all of our regulars who, who hung out and I hope we were able to show you a little bit of, of that car. It's a car we're very excited about. It's a car that I didn't, I, I, didn't want, I didn't know how excited I wanted to let myself be before that event. And then when we started seeing the car in the flesh, when we started hearing some of the specs, and when we heard the, uh, the, the price, under $60,000 for a base model, which I'm assuming is gonna translate into under, under 75 for a Z51, it's more money than I got, but it's I, I, 10 years down the road, it encourages me that they're gonna sell a lot of those cars and they're gonna be accessible for, for folks, folks like us that don't have all that money. So it's it definitely a car we are excited about. And when, um, when, when we do have one, uh, we are going to pour over every inch of the thing. And actually maybe when we do have a, have a C8 in, in the press fleet, whenever that may be, maybe we'll do a, a live studio audience. We'll, we'll invite some folks over and you can, you can check the car. I think that'd be a fun way to hang out and, um, and spend an evening in the shop. And uh, you have to have a, a parrot sitting on your shoulder though. That's the only, it's the only downside. So, all right, let's get into it. Uh, let's take a look at, at this Hyundai. So first question is, why is there a Hyundai in the garage? Uh, what's, what's special about a, a, a Hyundai Elantra? This is the Hyundai Elantra Sport. This is essentially the, uh, the it, it's not the Veloster N motor. This is a 201 horsepower turbocharged 1.6 liter four cylinder with, Chris, come, come around here and show them where in the magic lies. Show them, show them that silly, silly thing sticking out of the middle of the dash. Yes, a six speed manual transmission. How many of those do you see anymore? And you can get a little preview of the interior already. So uh, Chris, our, our camera op, drives a, a, a VW GTI. What year? He's like a 2010? 10. Yeah, so uh, Chris drives a 2010 GTI. I opened the door and Chris said, my God, that is the same steering wheel from my GTI. And it, it's pretty close. Like this is, this is not your, your uh, um, Avis rental car Hyundai right here. This is a, a fairly sporty car. So our, our thought is, is this, is this a challenger to something like a Civic Si? Um, certainly the specs are close. I, I, I will say it is 100% a challenger to something like the Honda Civic Sport. And the, comparing anything to a Honda is high praise. And if, if you read my quick review of the car at grassrootsmotorsports.com, I think, it, it's almost time that we started talking about not um, Hyundais in terms of Hondas, but about other cars in terms of Hyundais, because they are doing a lot, lot, lot of things right. Um, so, yeah, Pete says it's uh, the last manual sporty sedan unicorn from Hyundai. Yeah, th this is, uh, th this would not be here unless it was such a unicorn. So. Let's, let's walk around a little bit. I wanna, I wanna check a few things out and um, I, I wanna see you know, maybe how much performance is available here. First thing I wanna do is get a, um, get a camber measurement and we'll see what kind of camber we have on the thing. Let me grab a toe plate here. So tire wise, we are looking at 225, 40, 18. So uh, Han Hankook Ventus S1s, 225 is a, that's, that's, that, that's real rubber. I mean, that's, that's not screwing around. Uh, we got our digital smart camber here. All right, we are right at about, uh, we are actually at a little bit of negative camber, about seven tenths of a degree of negative camber in the front. So that's kind of encouraging. Let's, let's check the rear while, while we're at it. almost two degrees of negative camber in the rear. I, 
there are worse things to find out about a car than, than it's, um, it's got, got a little bit of camber right off the showroom floor. So that's kind of a cool place to start. Let's. So Esteban wants to know, does the 2019 still come with a rear independent suspension? Great question. We're gonna, actually going to have it on the lift here in a little bit. I, I did a little bit of reading beforehand, but I did not fully pour over all of the, um, all of the, uh, the, the specs, so, so, so we'll see exactly what's back there in a little bit. And somebody, somebody uh, said loosen up those bolts and see, see what else we can get on the, on the camber. Um, yeah, let's check that next and let's see what else is available there. So, uh, Chris, give them a look at the, the 1.6 liter turbo motor before we see if we can get any camber off the top of the struts here. You know what, I'm gonna switch. Uh, switch to the old safety glasses here and make it look like I'm not an idiot. And actually, I'll be able to see up close. Chris, I can't see you at all, but I can see what I'm doing here. Anybody from Hyundai is watching, uh, maybe our friend Miles, we will put your car back together before we give it back to you. Or at least we'll make sure your car looks like it's been put back together before we give it back to you. Oh, that's integral. Okay, so. This is this piece, this cowl piece here is actually integral with the piece behind the wipers. So we're not going to be able to get all the way in there. But you know what? Might be able to get a wrench in there and at least loosen that bolt and see if there's any slop on the top of the uh, top of the struts. So they actually paint marked some of some of these uh, these bolts, which is a nice touch. Some of these 15 millimeter bolts. Actually, 14 millimeter fasteners on the top of these uh, strut towers, which is taking me back to my old Toyota days. <sighs> so I've now broken the magical paint seal. Ooh, Chris, I don't know if you can get in there at all, but there's um, there's a there's a three thirty seconds of an inch around around that top strut bolt right there of slop to take up. Meaning that there is some camber available there. Tighten this back up. Thick. Okay, there we go. So we're off to a good start. Uh, we, we have a, a car with some performance intent that, um, that that has some performance performance specs um, on the suspension anyway and actually has a little bit of negative camber <laughs> so Pete says I need a I need a tool hander um, no I just need I just need to guess better I, I, I'm, I'm totally in, uh, in Corvette mode where everything's either a 13, a 15, an 18, or a 22. And um, this apparently is all Toyota spec where everything, I, my MR2 is like, 
Like if you have a 10, a 14, and a 17, you can take that car apart down to the frame. Oh God, now I gotta figure out how to read YouTube comments over here. So Joe says, if, you've, if he's done his homework, the only Elantra you can get with three pedals is the uh, GT N-Line. Um, well, Joe, for 2020, you would be absolutely correct. For 2019, however, this is kind of the magical car. If, if you guys are like, oh, that seems pretty cool. I'm going to go to the Hyundai model configurator right now, and I'm going to go see what it would uh, cost to put one of these together. These are not going to be available with the 201 horsepower engine and the six speed for 2020. So they are not on the Hyundai model configurator anymore. This is a 2019. This is a holdover. I don't know why this is in the press fleet, uh, because usually we don't get the unicorns in, in the press fleet. But if you want one of these, I think the answer is call around to every Hyundai dealer in the country. And my guess is they're going to be a deal because no one's going to buy these unless they're one of us. There, no Joe off the street is, is, is going to go look for a, um, you know, a, a 2019 Hyundai with a, with a, with a, with a six-speed. Um, Craig says, what happened to the 2004 Z06? It's, it's sitting right outside, Craig. It, it, the, don't worry. More, lots more Z06 content coming up on, on, on the show. Uh, we, are, we are having some fun with a, uh, with a Hyundai tonight. Let's... Um, Let's do the, the helmet test here. This, of course, what everybody wants to know is, can you get in the thing? What's the headroom like with a helmet on? So. All right, so I am... Um, I'm a gentleman of probably below average height, but average or above average torso height. So I actually, I have some headroom problems in, in cars frequently. I, I also like to sit fairly upright and, and kind of get my shoulders um, up, up in a good position. And with my rear helmet on and the seat in its lowest position, I am, like if I'm if I move quickly, and and shift my shoulders at all, I can actually feel a little bit of interference with the hump of the helmet and the roof. And this is a sunroof car, um, so there's a there's there's kind of a, a depression, you know, a, a positive depression in the roof right right above me, which is stealing some helmet headroom. It's not interfering with me. Like if I if I scooch my butt forward a little bit, you know, I'll 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 never touch it. But um, the uh, the C8 actually had more helmet headroom. Everybody was um, wondering about how how the C8 fit. The the it it had more more helmet clearance. So yeah, a little bit of uh, tight confines up there. But you know, I'm I'm five and a half feet tall, but I have I have the torso of a, of a six footer. So I would say if you're over six feet, um, you're 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 going to start 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 to have some inter interference problems with a helmet on. But while we're in here, let's, uh, Chris, grab me, grab me the light right, right, right behind you. I don't know how your exposure is right now. But while I'm in here, we can show folks the rest of the interior. So this is a really, really nice place to drive in here. Um, Hyundai is doing probably one of my favorite jobs right now with interiors. They're not flashy. They're, they're, they're not overdone. But Hyundai interiors remind me of... Uh, late 80s, early 90s Toyota interiors, which I think were laid out as perfect as, as interiors have ever gotten. I know what every button does. I can reach it. I've got, you know, positive feedback, tactile buttons for all of, all of my, my main functions. I do have a multifunction screen here. Um, I do have I, I do have a multifunction screen with uh, Apple CarPlay and you know a bunch of bunch of other features there, but all of my main functions I can access through a, a button with tactile feedback right right there on the dash, which I, I like a lot. 
no climate control, but uh, you know, basic air conditioning, which I am totally, totally fine with that. I, I you know, again, tactile feedback. I, I change the fan speed. I've got a, no, a knob with nice detents there. Uh, heated seats, heated seats. Yes, heated seats on both sides. No air conditioned seats, but but heated seats. Uh, dual 12 volt outlets, which is cool. Aux input and USB. Note to every single car manufacturer out there: do not hide your aux input and your and your USB input. Put them somewhere where I can access them. I don't care that it's another hole in the dash. I think everybody probably uh, agrees with me. But check out this steering wheel. The, as, as as Chris said, this reminds him of his GTI. It's 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 almost exactly the same as his GTI. Really, really nice steering wheel. Um, nice nine and three driving position. You know, uh, hand swells up here if you wanna if you wanna go 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 ten and two and relax a little bit, but nice little flat bottom here with the red stripe. You know, easy t turning access. Really a fantastic wheel, and it's it's actually a darn good handling car as well. It a lot of things that a Honda Civic does, this does just as as well for you know com comparable money we're gonna I, i've got the the factory price sticker on this and we'll talk about cost in in a little bit but um yeah it, it, from the inside it feels like there's a lot of value going go, going on there let us take a little break here yeah dinesh says uh, the only ac you, you need is is full cold wait wait uh there's, there's a brief um so Ted says, looks pretty tight for a tall, fluffy guy. No, I'm, I'm actually a short, fluffy guy. Uh, but it, it, I, I, like to, I, I like to sit kind of close. It's actually, it's actually not, not tight at all. It, it feels like I've got, I've got shoulder room. I have, I have elbow room. It's, it's, it, you feel like you're sitting in the car, but you don't feel confined by the car. And everything really is, is in a very natural position. The relationship of the clutch, the brake, and and the throttle are all very intuitive. Like the, the clutch throw doesn't feel like it's too long or too short in relation to where the brake pedal and, 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 and gas are. When you set yourself to be in the right position for the gas and brake, you're also in the right position for the clutch. That frustrates me about, honestly, BMWs especially, is like you get where you think you want the brake. Oh, the worst, worst car for it is the, uh, the Focus ST and, and RS. Like when I get, to where I like where the, the gas and, and brake are on a Focus RS. Like I can't use the clutch. I need, I need like a, you know, a two by four on, on the clutch to use the thing properly. Um, yeah, Game Boy says, kudos to sticking to universal audio inputs that will still be around in a, in a decade. Yeah, don't, don't, don't get overly fancy. Give me a USB input. Give me a 3.5 mil, millimeter jack. Put them right next to a 12 volt outlet, and I, I don't I don't care if it's extra holes in the dash. Put them where I can see them. Put them where I can access them, and and you you got me for a customer. Uh, Racer says um, for a real unicorn you can find a 2017 Elantra Sport in base spec without a sunroof. Yeah, the the w without the sunroof on this thing you're you're gonna get in there with a helmet a heck of a lot easier. Uh, Austin says, this is my kind of journalism. Thank you, Austin. We're, we're, we're just here to have a good time. Um, anything else we missed under here? So one, one thing that I'm definitely seeing here, and just kind of get a, get a, get a sense of, of the, the general layout, is the, the powertrain, the motor and, and transaxle, really, really well forward of, of the, the uh, strut lines. And that's... That's just a packaging thing. You know, they haven't leaned back a little bit, um, so they're trying to get the weight back as much as they can. But if you if you look at the direct side view, so here's here's the center line of the motor, and that is a good five six inches in front of the the line of the of the hubs. So for weight distribution, that's not going to be the greatest thing. But um, you know, that's the world we live in now. This is not a Lotus Elise. This is this is a Hyundai Elantra, which I think is, is the slogan of the car, actually.
All right, let's, uh, what else do we want to see before we put it up in the air? Let's take a look. Let's see if we can figure out how to open the trunk. Oh my God. Yeah, straight out of the, uh, the 80s Toyota, um, we figured out how to, how to do stuff right. Look, anybody that, that owned an 80s or 90s Toyota, look at the trunk and fuel release levers right, right there, and that will take you back a little bit. Because that, that is... That is straight out of the Hachi Roku MR2. Wow, all kinds of trunk in this thing. Look at it. Let me grab a light, Chris. That is, that is trunk for days. Not a huge pass-through, but a, like a 60-40 folding rear seat that you can, you can get the folded down. But even, even without having to use that pass-through, you got, um, boy, you could, have a, you could have a party back there. That is, that is plenty of room. This makes me think that the spare is back here. Got some save a spare action going on under the trunk floor. Nothing too exciting back there, except a, a very, very sizable um, area to, to store your goods. Backup camera, of course, standard. I guess, I guess that's the law now, basically. We're, we're into the period where backup cameras are standard on, on everything, um, which is, you know, look, running over kids is, is not, 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 not good. I, I get it. Uh, cute little spoiler. We're going to do, we're going to put it on the scales in a little bit, but instead of doing... Our contest tonight, um, as a what's it weigh presented by Intercomp, we're, we're still going to weigh it and we'll still uh, give Inter Intercomp all the glory there. We're going to do a what's it cost presented by um, uh, money, I guess, is who that's going to be presented by. Since I have the actual, the actual Monroney form here, which is the uh, legally required form that must come with every car. We're going to move it around really fast so you can't see it. So I have, I have the actual total price of, of this vehicle right here. And um, you, can, you can guess that, not, not yet, but later. Be able to guess that and um, we will give away some fabulous prizes. <laughs> Joe says, nice to see they didn't put, didn't put an iPod in, in the dash. Yeah, m more and more, all, all I really want is um, just, just some place to plug, plug my phone in. And, and it, I'm becoming a fan of Apple CarPlay. Um, I usually I just I just want a, a USB port to plug my phone in, and um, I'll do everything on, on my phone. But I've I actually had a couple of rental cars with Apple CarPlay, and I, I really kind of started to dig it. So uh, I'm thinking about adding some aftermarket Apple CarPlay uh, stereos to like my my truck and stuff. All right, let's get this thing up in the air. Pause for a brief moment of a fat guy rolling around on the ground here. We want to show all the respect we can to our friends, not only at Hyundai, but um, the hardworking ladies and gentlemen at the press car services that deliver these things to us. Good, let's lift her up and take a look underneath.
All right, let's see what you're hiding there. We're not crushing any floor pans. Everything is perfectly legit. We're, we're on all, we're, yeah, we're totally, I, I, I did check. We're on all the, uh, the pinch welds. Everything's nice to say. So the first thing I'm liking is wheel, uh, wheel nuts and not bolts because we all know that uh, wheel bolts are a scam from the devil. Things got some rubber on it. Definitely can't complain about lack of tire. Uh, fairly, fairly standard strut arrangement. Um, boy, actually, you know, very, very, very old school Toyota, like just in, in that sort of standard design where the sway bar connects to, uh, to a tab on the, on the side of the strut housing. Um, big single piston caliper. Let's measure those, uh, those rotors which would require me finding a tape measure, which I have like 400 tape measures. I don't see a single one. That is, that is my curse, ladies and gentlemen, is the, uh, the losing of tape measures. I, I get, see, I'm, I'm the guy that goes to Harbor Freight and um, whenever they have the, the giveaway stuff and I always get the free tape measure. And I just leave tape measures scattered all over the shop because I know when I need one, here's one, one will show up. There's no lie, there's gotta be 60 tape measures in this shop somewhere. There, there's probably, like it, it, it's like alligators in a, in a swamp. They're just everywhere. You just don't, don't see them initially because I've lost them all. So we got a full, a full foot of, uh, of, of vented front brake rotor there. So nothing to sneeze at, um, but nothing that's gonna, gonna shake the world there. See how much sway bar we got on here. So we got 24 millimeters, almost a full inch of front sway bar on the front. So they're 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 combating a lot of the uh, the front weight bias and the natural tendency for that that engine that sits pretty high in the chassis um, and is 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 going to you know have a lot of a, a lot of uh, Inertia in a in a turn trying to lean this car where they're they're combating that with with a full inch of, of sway bar in the front. Um, oh, Shane wants to see the uh, the top bolt concentric. Uh, I don't think we have much slotting there. You know what? I guess. It wouldn't kill us to just pull one bolt out of there, would it? What what say you, audience? Yeah, somebody pointed out that the um, the wheel well is not fully fully jacketed in um, front front and back fender uh, inner fender liners, but just bare coated metal in there. What do we think that is? Like an 18 millimeter?
Good God, 17 millimeter. This thing is a Toyota. Wow. That's on there. We may have to uh, break out a little more advanced weaponry for this one, gang. Good old fashioned dude muscle. Sure, everybody's really enjoying all these grunting sounds right now. You're, you're here on a fantastic night, everybody. Welcome to our version of reality TV. And a 19 over there. So no concentrics for any, any sort of um, factory, you know, precise camber adjustment, but I'll back this thing off far enough and we'll see if there's, there's some slots in there. This, this must be a uh... yeah somebody mentioned that Toyota is 17 on both sides yeah this is a 17 17 19 which actually my aw11 mr2 was a lot of 17 on both sides the sw20 is a lot of 17 19 so yeah Chris you can come around the front here and we'll show him that there is there is not a bit of clearance around around that top bolt right there so you're not getting any camber from that guy um, all your camber is going to come from from what's there already and from uh from the um the top but i have it on fairly good authority by which i mean a guy at hyundai told me if you go to a hyundai dealer and you get the camber bolts off of a, and somebody may have mentioned this in the, in the comments already, because I know some of you guys know this. You get the camber bolts off of um, a Genesis Coupe. They are a smaller diameter than these are, and you will have access to a little more negative camber going, going on right there. Um, Yeah, somebody mentioned the uh, the option of the the Veloster N concentric. That I, I think I think the that's actually finally a, a thing now that um, there's a there's a Veloster N concentric that you can get. And actually, that that would probably fit on on this as well. Click. <laughs> Shane wants to see the clutch. No, we're not doing doing that tonight. I still, I gotta, so apparently I have to pull the headers back off of one side of the Corvette because uh, we lost the oil temp sensor. And by we lost, I mean I broke, I think, when I was installing one of the headers. So I think the uh, the dreaded driver's side header has to come back off the the Corvette. All right, let's take a look at the rear. Hey, before we do though, folks, I told you about our friends at CRC Industries. You know what? Uh, are your are your hands dirty? 
Like, like my, actually my hands aren't that dirty yet. My hands will be dirty later. I'll be using some of these CRC hand cleaning wipes. Uh, if my car was dirty, if the underside of my car was dirty, you know what, I'd probably grab a can of brake clean. I might grab a, clean, a can of that electronics cleaner, which CRC won't admit to this, but makes a great decal remover because it flashes off very quickly and it's very paint safe. A lot of CRC products on our shelves. We hope that you do the same thing as well. If not because they are fantastic products, and folks, because they are a fantastic company that gives a little bit back to our world of motorsports, both by supporting shows like this, great events like our $2,000 challenge, and racing at every single level. I'll sit here and wash my hands while we do this, and you'll see just how clean the hands of a sweaty, disheveled internet host can be. My God, I have not felt this fresh since I was a baby. And um, you too can feel exactly this fresh. Check them out online, crcindustries.com, even better. Go to a store, buy some brake clean, buy some uh, power lube, buy some freeze off. Make us happy, make them happy. It's gonna make you happy too. Also, don't forget our friends at Coney Shocks, our proud supporters of this show, coney-na.com on the web. You need shocks for your tow rig, you need shocks for your track car, for your daily driver, for your, uh, your suburban SUV, dropping the kids off at the pool, for your uh, competition car. Coney's got them, coney-na.com on the web, or go to Tire Rack and they will be able to hook you up with some great Coney shocks as well. And SPC Industry Specialty, Specialty Products Corporation, slow down, take care of the sponsors. If you need it, you know what, maybe, you, maybe you've got a Hyundai Elantra you need some camber bolts for, because clearly this thing doesn't have the right camber bolts in the front. SPC's got them, baby. They got control arms. They got roll center adjusters. SPC, spcalignment.com on the web. Check them out. You're building an autocross car. You're building a track car. They will be able to hook you up with the parts that you need to get your suspension operating at its optimum. And... Proud supporters of this show as well. Independent suspension in the rear. Uh, we got some trailing arms. We got some lateral arms. We'll look under there. For, well, we actually have concentrics in the back too. We'll put it up a little bit higher and we'll take a look at those. Single piston brakes in the back. Let's see how big. Yeah, Dinesh says he's still waiting on the return of Coney Man. Us too, man. Uh, it, you know, getting busy is a hell of a thing. Um, you get all these great ideas and you start working with people and everybody gets busy and your, your great ideas have to get put on hold. But yes, that, that is going to be, we'll be seeing more of Coney Man someday. Ten and a half inches is our diameter on those uh, rotors in the back. So Michael says, uh, that's GTI energy right there. Yeah, real, getting a real GTI vibe um, all around on, on this thing for, for a lot of reasons. You know, the, the, certainly the, the steering wheel um, among those reasons, but um, this trailing arm suspension is, is very, very GTI-like. Christmas probably looks fairly familiar to you. Uh, so Hyundai has taken a lot, of, a lot of engineering, you know, a lot of designs from other companies and kind of made it their own. I, I suggest to you, if you want to watch a really cool video, um, we, we sat down with Albert Bierman, who is now like Hyundai's head of design uh, globally. Albert Bierman, formerly BMW M Divisions, chief engineer, now over at, at Hyundai, originally working just on the N-line stuff, now working um, all the way across their, their product line. We got to sit down with him at the Nurburgring just a few weeks ago and um, really smart dude and really gets it. And I think part of the reason that we're, we're looking at such a cool car here that would otherwise be just a normal economy car is because of, of Mr. Beerman and, um, and, and his ilk, um, you know, making these things better than, than they have to be. 20 years ago, a 200 horsepower, six speed front wheel drive car would have, would, would have been like a mind boggling thing. That, that, that would have been just a, an amazing thing to have. Um, it's kind of cool that that's just another cool, cool car today. 
All right, so we actually do have some uh, provided for camber adjustment in the rear here via some, via some concentrics. That's pretty cool. And a really, really nice perpendicular arrangement on these, on these control arms. We have almost a, a perfect 90 degree angle and, and actually almost a, a perfect, perfectly parallel to direction of travel and, and to, to the car for this, this, this trailing arm here. So, so what's that do for us? Well, it helps out, it help, helps out quite a bit uh, with these, these rubber bushings because these bushings now only, they have a lot less deflection to do. If, if these control arms were not uh, parallel, if, if, if uh, let's say this, this, this trailing arm uh, wasn't quite parallel to, to the, the, the way it moved, when that bushing deflected, it, it, would not, it would not only have to rotate, it would have to deflect sideways because of that, that lateral offset. Well, this front bushing now has a heck of a lot less work to do. It can concentrate on constraining motion through just one axis. And it, ultimately, it makes, makes, it, makes it easier to tune the car to handle properly and to tune that car to handle properly through a wide range of, of um, dynamics and a and, and, you know, wide range, range of input. So, Nice inherent design right there to, uh, to, to begin with. Um, a lot, boy, a lot, a lot, nice big exhaust pipe on this thing. Really nice clean mandrel bends with no, no um, appreciable pinching in, in the middle here. So everything has been bent up really, really nice. Um, steel, steel construction on everything or stainless steel construction of some sort of ferrous construction. Little pre-resonator here and fairly small cat. It's still kind of warm. Cool thing about turbo engines is turbo engines don't need a ton of muffler because the turbo itself pulls a lot of energy out of the exhaust and, and part of the energy it's pulling out of the exhaust is not only that that energy of motion to spool, spool itself up, but it's pulling a lot of sound out of that, out of the exhaust as well. Sound is a form of energy as well. The turbo is pulling pulling a ton of sound out of the exhaust. So the turbo is essentially a tiny spinning muffler. So you don't really need a ton of you, know, you don't need as much muffler on a turbo car as you do on a naturally aspirated car to produce the same types of sound levels. So you can you know gain you can uh, reduce some of the weight back by using lighter, simpler muffler constructions on, on turbocharged cars. Uh, yeah, I mean, th th this, is, this is fairly, fairly standard, but you know, well-designed standard front, front wheel drive stuff. Um, this, this, these dog bone engine mounts are, are, are gonna be doing a ton of work in high horsepower front wheel drive cars because they're, they're constraining a lot of fore and aft rotational motion of, of, of the engine. You, the, so the, the engine mounts are, are way up high there. They're actually like probably a foot above us. So think about the lever arm that's created with that engine trying to rotate on those engine mounts multiplied by the length of the arm that comes from the pivot point of those engine mounts all the way down to, the, to this, this uh, lower dog bone. And think about the force going through this thing, you know, multiplied by, by that lever. So this, this has a lot to do. You start putting more, more horsepower to a front, front wheel drive car. This is one of your, your weak links, right, right here. And this one is very, very well designed with um, a rotational bushing at, at the front. And instead of having a, a dog bone style where, where you've got a single, single pin bushing like this one at the rear, which is like what, uh, that's, what that's what my, my Mazda Speed 3 has. I think that's what uh, some Hondas have. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's a typical Mazda design. This one has basically a, a compression only bushing in, in the rear, a lot beefier in the rear. So when this engine accelerates, this uh, mount gets pushed backwards. This big chunk of rubber is taking all that, that compressive force. And it's not another one of these, you know, sort of, sort of single, single pin bushings here. It's a nice, big, beefy piece of rubber taking all that compressional force going back in there. So no, yeah, nice, nice inherent design right, right there. Uh, oil filters right here, drain plugs right there. You don't have to take off any, any sort of um, uh, cla underbody cladding to do maintenance. 
Uh, I'm guessing this is the trans drain plug right here. So real good access to that. I don't see where you fill it, but I'm not imagining, oh, that's, that's right above there. So you gotta take off a little bit of plastic to fill the trans. That's something you're only gonna do every 50,000, 60,000 miles anyway. So maintenance wise, yeah, a lot of, a lot of good access to stuff. Let's get caught up with, a, oh, someone wants to know the exhaust diameter. Yeah, let's um, grab the old calipers here. Exhaust diameter is 60 millimeters. So yeah, God, two and uh, two and three eighths uh, is 60 millimeters. So fairly, that's a, that's a beefy exhaust for a, for a 1.6 liter um, sporty automobile. Go through and see if we missed any questions here. Somebody said stainless isn't isn't magnetic. Yeah, you're right. I get that wrong a lot if you've watched the show before. Um, <laughs> Shane wants us to do a worst possible MPG test. So far, I, I drove this thing around a little bit this weekend and. Just in you know my normal old man driving around here, it's you know it's a 30 plus mile a gallon car. Um, any any turbo car, even a direct injected turbo car, you start driving them hard, and you're gonna you're gonna go through some fuel. But I, I'm guessing if you drive like just a complete a hole 24 um, seven, you're probably still looking at a 20 21 mile mile per gallon car. So. Yeah, Jamie said 25 is is worst case. That 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 sounds that sounds fairly reasonable. Uh, Gary wants to know tire size. No, 225 18s, Gary. Um, 225 18s. Did I get that right? Pretty sure. Yeah, 225, 40, 18 uh, hand-cooked Ventuses. So, you know, that's probably a seven and a half inch wheel. Um, and if you, yeah, check out the sidewall here, Chris. That's a 225 and it's, it's not really squoes on there. So you could probably easily throw a 245 on, on, on this wheel without, without any problem at all if you were looking to put something a little bit more aggressive on there. Uh, okay, what, uh, let's see if we have any more questions. If not, we'll throw her on the scales. Um, yeah, Jamie came from 18, seven and a half. I, um, I guessed correctly on, on that one. <laughs> Put the YouTube glasses on. Uh, Esma wants to know if it is LSD equipped. It is not. So if 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 there was um, if if there was a drawback here, you know, it, it's a it's a low price car. Um, so it, a front wheel drive car with a limited slip, fairly premium premium piece. So not on on this one. But at the power levels operating out here, it doesn't miss it that much. Chris, does your car have a Limited slip, yeah. Chris's GTI, his 2010 GTI does not have a limited slip. Okay, yeah. So it says it was it was an option, but his his doesn't have it. Yeah, the, I, you're, but new. That was probably a thirty thousand dollar car, right? Yeah. yeah. So we'll bring this thing back down. We'll put it on the scales while we are uh, lowering it down. We'll talk a little bit about once again the folks that support this show. Hey, if you wanted to do me a favor. Uh, you can do, do me a couple couple of favors. If you enjoy the content we bring you guys, not only on the show every week, but in the magazine, go to our sponsors. Go to CRC's Facebook page because they have one. Go to Coney's Facebook page because they have one and they watch it. Go to SPC's Facebook page and just post something on their wall. It says, hey, thanks for supporting GRM Live. That, you have no idea how big of a deal that, that is 
for these companies because there's, there's some person at that company whose job it is to just make sure that they get noticed on, on social media. And you can, you can look at likes and shares all day long, but that personal contact, like, that's a big deal. That, that makes them stand up and, and take notice. So, you know, if, if you're thinking about being charitable, um, it, maybe, maybe, maybe that is, is, is your way of giving, giving a little bit back to the universe is by um, going to the, the page of one of our supporters and telling them that you appreciate them supporting us. And who am I talking about um, there, folks? I'm talking about our friends at, uh, at CRC Industries. On the web at crcindustries.com, even better, a major retailer near you. You can get great products like Brake Clean, like uh, CRC Power Lube, Electronics Cleaner were one of my favorite um, products that I've discovered from them. Of course, their screen and lens cleaner we use to clean all of our electronics before each and every edition of Grassroots Motorsports Live. And uh, great products like Freeze Off, too. I can send you to their website, but I just want you to go to the store and, and, and buy some of this stuff. Just, just, just give this to me for once. For once in your life, just let me have this. And yes, to answer your next question, we will properly torque uh, these, these lug nuts before this car goes back to the press car service tomorrow. Um, I, I may be a scumbag, but I'm not that big of a scumbag. Close. But not entirely. Also, while I got you, while I'm, while I'm uh, threading these lug nuts on these wheels, let's talk about our friends at Coney Shocks. Coney-NA dot com on the web or great retailers like tire rack you need shocks for your tow vehicle you need shocks for your daily driver you'd be going to a track night in america with your uh, your three series you want a little more performance you, you, know, you don't want a race car but you want something that you can tune a little bit something that you can enjoy a little bit check out coney coney-na.com on the web or great retailers or give them a call talk to lee grimes talk to uh, pretty much anybody that answers the phone there it's going to be able to give you some great information and they will tell you all about Coney Shocks. And also, uh, check out our friends at SPC Industries, spcalignment.com on the web, especially products corporation, control arms, camber kits, caster kits, roll center correcting devices, whatever you need to go under your car, um, make your suspension perform at its optimum. SPC has it, spcalignment.com on the web. <laughs> Game Boy says, yeah, we just blast them up to about 200 uh, foot-pounds like the professionals at the tire shops. Yes, uh, I am, I am a, uh, a scumbag, but I am not a, a pure scumbag. You know what? Kieran said click, so I, I, I think we are, we are fully torqued. All right, let's break out the scale. So, okay, uh, guessing time, gang. We're, we're going to do, we'll do two guesses. The, the official guess tonight is going to be uh, guess, guess the price, but we're also going to put it on, on, on the scale. The reason we're not doing guess uh, what's it weigh presented by an intercomp is because usually we'll weigh the car at the top of the show, so it's easier for us to keep track of your, your weight guesses. We didn't do that this time. We'll still accept your guesses, and maybe if, we, if somebody gets it exactly, we'll send you something. But um, I have in my hand the Monroni, the official price sticker of this Hyundai 2019 Elantra Sport manual transmission. And I have the total price here. The only option on this vehicle is carpeted floor mats. Um, I'm not even going to tell you how much those are. So I want to know the total price, including freight and handling of this Hyundai. Whoever comes closest uh, without going over to the dollar is going to win some fabulous prizes. So get those guesses in there now. <laughs> and yeah, you, you, you may as well throw your... Throw your, uh, your, your weight guesses in there, too. I'm, don't let me stop you. Mm. 
meantime, we will bring out the Intercomp wireless scales. And um, let's, hey, let's talk a little bit about what's coming up next week. Very cool show. Next week, uh, we're going to have the, uh, the crew from Chicken Hawk Racing here. They are manufacturers, uh, distributors of active tire warmers. And they're big in the, uh, the motorcycle racing community, branching out into cars, doing, doing, doing some car stuff. Now, I know a lot of the racing that folks like us do at the, the sort of grassroots level, we are not allowed to use active tire warmers, but what we're gonna talk about next week is not, is not only how those active tire warmers work, but how passive tire heat retention works. Um, and just why we wanna put heat in tires, what, what physical properties of a tire change with temperature that we are trying to maximize. So very, very good um, performance tire tech next week with the gang from Chicken Hawk Racing. Zero out our scales here. Of course, me kicking that one around while I was zeroing it didn't help very much. Now we're zeroed, there we go. By the way, if you, um, if, if corner weighting a car is something that you do like more than twice a year and you are shopping for scales, do not even think about getting wired scales. Oh my God. The, we had, we had a set of wild wired scales forever. And weighing a car on wireless scales is a huge production. Uh, doing them on, on wireless scales is an absolute joy. I mean, I was talking to you while I was, I was doing this and still managed to set it up in, in just a couple of minutes. With, with wired scales, you got, well, you got wires going every which way. It's a huge pain in the butt. So, Yes, wireless scales, that's the shizzle. Okay, we are off the lift. We are on the Intercomp Quickway system wireless scales. And let's see, Subi Engineer says 3,122K, Game Boy. 25,329.50. Racer one, 23,531.50. See what we got coming in on um, Alan Merrill, 24.6. Uh, Nathan Doyle, 31. I love doing two guesses at once. This is exciting. Um, Steve, 32.21 pounds. Shane says we need a theme song for the lift. Yeah, we need a live band. We need I need like Paul Schaefer over here that I can I can just throw stuff to all the time. Uh Genie Crevishine 29.8. Price 26.32. I'd tell you you're high on one and low on the other. Okay, let's do let's do weight first. The weight of this 2019 Hyundai Elantra Sport Edition, 3,025 pounds, 3,025. And of course, uh, this, these being computerized scales, we can easily select these uh, two front pads and see exactly how much weight is on the front. A full 59.5% of the weight on the front of this thing. Actually better than I was expecting considering how far forward the engine sits on, on this thing. So 3,025 pounds. Um, I, saw some, I, I saw a lot of, they were either, either high or low. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm fairly, fairly impressed actually. And um, I, I still see guesses coming in so. Um, either that's the, the, the delay or somebody wasn't paying attention. And now we go to price. So 
Yeah, Brett says that's pretty light for a modern car. It is. That's 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 not half bad. Um, you know what? I didn't see what is the hood aluminum or something? Nope, steel hood. Steel roof, all all steel doors. Yeah, everything's steel on it, so no no lightweight construction, just um just you know solid solid building. So now we come come to the price. Um looks like uh oh so somebody says Andrew one with 3012. Yep, and Andrew Fall, well, one of our top fans, Andrew Fox. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, Dinesh, 23759. All right, last chance. Here we go. The uh, total price. Now, your, your price at your local dealer may vary. This is the price from Hyundai. Actually, if it's more than this, the local dealer, yeah, you, you show them this entire hour long garbage fest that we've done for the last hour and, and um, tell them that this Hyundai is $23,655 American dollars. Can you, can you zoom in that far, Chris? Or, or they can just trust me. <laughs> you got it? Wow, okay. Oh, Gary Lee, 23610. So you came close. All right, so it looks like, um, looks like uh, Gary Lee Niles is the winner on the price, unless there was one that I missed. And Andrew Fox is the winner on the weight. So yeah, if, if you won or if you think you won, shoot me an email, jg at grassrootsmotorsports.com and we'll get um, a lovely prize package out to you. Speaking of lovely prizes, if you want, um, actually we, we, have, we have lots of very awesome deals going on right now. Let me go grab a couple of these new stickers we have. We have, um, some of these cool new mini grassroots motorsports stickers are kind of a semi die cut design. They are a buck a piece in our store at grassrootsmotorsports.com. Click the link that says store. You'll be able to go find them. If you want to win some for free, sign up for our GRM live text alert list, text GRM live, G R M L I V E to three, one, nine, nine, six. There's no charge. We're not going to spam you. We're not going to send you a bunch of weird stuff. It's not going to be like, me at two in the morning, like crying, like nobody loves me, somebody talk to me. It, okay, it might be that once in a while, but mostly it's just gonna be, here's what's on the show this week. Uh, maybe we, we change nights, we change the schedule. We wanna let you know about it. And every week we give away five sets of these new stickers. You're entered automatically if you're on that list. You get a text that says, hey, you just entered a contest. You didn't even know it. You don't have to do anything. We should tell you in a couple hours if you won or not. And then maybe a couple hours later, you get an email that says, hey, you won. Send us your, your address. And a couple of stickers magically show up at, uh, at, at your address. Now, we're going to keep that contest going as long as that list continues to grow. So text GRM Live to 31996. Get on that list and uh, you might win some stickers. If you go to grassrootsmotorsports.com right now, go to our store. We are running um, the last few days of our Christmas in July sale, which is $10 one year subscriptions, whether it's new or renewal. We have lots of good deals on closeout shirts for both grassroots motorsports and classic motorsports. Like we're selling t-shirts for like eight bucks a piece, like styles we don't, don't carry anymore. And they're all cool. You, you know, trust me on this, they are all cool. But where are you gonna get a shirt for eight bucks? And free shipping over $35. So go there, spend some money. We would, um, we would appreciate you doing that. So, and Subi Engineer says, he loves the mini stickers. Thank you very much. We, we, we like it too. They are, they are great. If you see me at an event, maybe, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, you'll be lucky enough, I'll just give you one. But if you're not gonna see me at an event, they're a buck a piece, or maybe you win some by joining the, uh, the text list. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Pete says the new sticker is rock. Um, I think we, uh, I think we have, some, have some fans of the new stickers. All right, gang, that is, um, that is pretty much it for the show next week. 
all about tires and tire heat next week on the show with the crew from Chicken Hawk Racing. Tire warmers, tire blankets. What does heat do to a tire? Why is it good? Why could it be bad if it's not enough or too much? What does heat do to pressure? What does pressure do to heat? Uh, what do all of these things mean? All that and more at 9 p.m. Eastern next week here at Grassroots Motorsports Live. Thanks very much to Chris flying the camera tonight. Thanks to David who is working in social media tonight, keeping up with you guys, answering your questions, keeping the links flowing. And um, yeah, next week we'll, uh, we'll give out the, the drunk text uh, list link. Um, and that's, that's basically me like just wigged out on Ambien, just ordering stuff off of Amazon that shows up two days later. I'm like, who ordered this? And I guess I have to keep it now. Um, actually, that, that's, that's my idea for a new service. It's called Ambi Amazon. And it's basically Amazon, but you've got to take an Ambien beforehand. And everything's like 60% off, but you can't return it. You just have to keep everything. It's super cheap, but you are stuck with it. So uh, if, if anybody uses that idea, I will know where, where you got it. And that, that's what's going to get me off of this hamster wheel right here. And that when, you, when you see me disappear, you'll know that Ambi Amazon worked out like aces. Um, all right, gang, that, that is it. We are, uh, we are out of here. We'll see you again next week. For, uh, for the entire gang at Grassroots Motorsports, I'm J.G. Pasturejack. For Coney Shocks, for SPC Industries, and for CRC Industries, and, of course, Intercomp, um, our What's It Way sponsor. I'm J.G. Pasturejack. Good night, everybody. We'll see you again next Wednesday.